Perhaps the doctor will see you now. So, what seems to be the problem here today? My friend Alex can't open his mouth, he's sweating profusely, and he's having a difficult time breathing and swallowing. Hmm. And look at his marvelous locked jaw. These all seem to be symptoms of tetanus. Very good. Um, so what bacteria causes tetanus? If I'm not mistaken, I believe it is Clostridium tetani. Very good. So, um, Alex, have you had like a deep puncture wound or a, a cut recently? Mm -hmm. What? What was that? I think he's trying to tell you he has a puncture wound on his knee. He must have gotten it the other day when he was gardening. Well, that explains a lot. Um, Clostridium tetani is found in soil and feces, so when you get a deep puncture wound like that, the dirt can get in and cause an infection. And I believe that these bacteria like anaerobic conditions, and when in anaerobic conditions, they will produce the toxins tetanolysin and tetanospasmin, which will then travel throughout Alex's bloodstream and lymphatic system. So the tetanospasm toxin, it binds to your neurons, specifically your uh, peripheral motor neurons, then it travels through the spinal cord, and it'll attach to your uh, gangliocide receptors, which will allow the endocytosis into the actual axon. So Clostridium tetani gets around the host defenses by preventing the release of inhibitory neurotransmitters, glycine and GABA. Damage by this toxin causes unopposed muscle contractions, like we can see with his lockjaw, and then in more serious cases, seizures and other sorts of spasm. This causes his body to become rigid, and um, eventually, he won't be able to exhale his diaphragm and die that way. So, Alex, uh, I see you're 22 here. Have you gotten your tetanus booster? You're supposed to get a new one every 10 years. Mm. Alex, how could you not know? If you would have just gotten your DTAP vaccine, you could have prevented this whole thing. If you would have cleaned your wound out, controlled the bleeding, and sought medical attention like I said to, you wouldn't be here right now. Alex, you could have died. Mm. Well, thank goodness it's only a mild case. In some severe cases, we might have used an artificial respirator, and then we would have to use like some muscle relaxers to control the spasms. But since you only have this mild case, we're going to put you on some, um, some antitoxins, some antibiotics, and then um, diazepam to control the muscle spasms in your face. And we will for sure update your tetanus booster. Wow, I feel so much better now. I'm never going to forget my immunizations or ever mistreat a wound like that again. But in all reality, this is a serious matter and you need to know how to prevent it. First step, get your immunization, the DTaP vaccine as mentioned before. Second thing is your boosters. Every uh, t every 10 years starting at the age of 11 or 12. So everyone in this class, it's about your time. If you get a deep wound or cut, control the bleeding, keep the wound clean, apply antibiotic cream or ointment, cover the wound to keep the bacteria out, change the dressing, and always seek medical attention. You never know if this information is going to save your life. This has been a public service announcement brought to you by or from Alex Roth. Have a great day.